Hey friends, in this video, we're going to talk about the differences between a DTU and a vCore when it comes to Azure SQL database and determining what would be the best compute, memory, and price for you and your company. Let's get to it. Hello, my name is Austin Leibel and I'm a trainer at Pragmatic Works. And one of the things that I do for Pragmatic Works is I teach people about working inside of the Microsoft Cloud called Azure. Now, one of the questions I'm asked pretty frequently when working inside of Azure is, hey, Austin, we want to go and we want to migrate from an on-premises SQL server into some sort of cloud representation of that. And an Azure SQL database is a great tool to be able to do that exact thing with. But there's a little bit of confusion when it comes to how do we determine what is the purchasing and pricing model I should look at when I'm creating an Azure SQL database. There are two options that you are provided whenever you are provisioning this inside of the Azure portal a DTU or a database transaction unit and a vCore, which stands for a virtual core. So which one should I choose and what's the difference between them? Let's talk about that. A DTU or a database transaction unit is going to be this blended measure that's going to combine CPU, memory, data, IO, and is best suited for users who prefer really a simplified approach to a management of performance. Now, this is going to essentially abstract the underlying hardware into a single unit of measure. So instead of separating out CPU, memory, and IO, we're going to make it one singular unit to make it easier to understand for users who may not have an in-depth knowledge of database performance tuning. A DTU purchasing model comes with a predefined set of performance tiers, such as basic, standard, and premium, and with each comes its own set of fixed resources and corresponding limits. Now, on the other hand, a virtual core or a vCore is going to provide more granular control over the resource allocation. It's going to allow users to ultimately choose the number of vCores allowed to them, which is going to offer them some flexibility to be able to scale up and down resources based on a very specific workload requirement. Now, vCores and purchase models are going to be preferred by users who are going to want to have more precise control over their resource allocation. So what are the key differences between them? Well, really a DTU is going to be this bundled measure of resources. So a vCore is going to be more granular. So you have more control over the CPU and memory separately, where a DTU is going to come as this pre-packaged object. With flexibility, vCore is going to be much more flexible in being able to resource your allocations and things like that and have uh, a set of con defined compute, while DTU is going to come with only fixed tiers and you can't have specific things that might be scaled up for one thing and less for another. DTU is ultimately going to be a simpler object to manage and understand, especially for users who may not have this extensive experience with database performances, but vCore is going to have maybe a little bit more flexibility and some options, including an ability to go with a serverless option as well. Now, the cost structure between these two can be vastly different as well. Let's actually go over into the Azure portal and let's see what it would look like to turn on and create an Azure SQL database and how some of the choices are going to work for us. I'll see you over inside the Azure portal. All right, here I am inside of my Azure portal now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and create a new SQL database. I'm not going to actually create one. I'm just going to show you what the options are as you create them for yourself. So I'm going to come over and find my different SQL databases that I have for inside of my Azure portal. And I'm going to look to create a new one. Now, some of the settings you're going to want to configure for an Azure SQL database are going to be up to you and your specific department and how you set up your subscriptions and resource groups as a part of the Azure hierarchy. But ultimately, let's come down here and let's look at this point that talks about compute and storage on this creation window screen here. Now, by default, you get this general purpose serverless database as the option that when you first create one, it defaults to. But we can change that for ourselves if we would like. So if I come over here to configure my database, you will see that I have a different set of service and compute tiers available to me. To begin with, let's look at what service tiers we have. So in the vCore purchasing model, we have general purpose, hyperscale, and business critical. As a part of the DTU structure, it's basic, standard, or premium. Let's look at the basic really quickly. That's going to be for very, very small workloads. With a by DTU basic compute tier, you're going to have allotted to you only about two gigabytes 
of max size of that database. So you're not going to be able to go through and have like a lot of data stored here. This is more for just simple things that you're doing or creating a proof of concept when you're first migrating or looking at Azure. Now, some of the other types of service tiers around the DTU purchasing model include the standard, which has a set different set of S0, S1, S2, S3 sets that include how many DTUs you're going to be provisioned. Now, by default, the basic standard S service tier is going to have 10 DTUs. But I have this sliding scale where I can slide that up for more and more and more and more. And you'll notice here the different places I put my scale, you're going to see a different cost associated with that. Essentially, the more DTUs or the more compute you have, the more you're going to pay for that, of course. Now, we other have this also option to be able to increase the max size of that DTU database as well. So if I go through and start sliding this scale over for the DTUs, you'll notice that that data max size will actually decrease as well because we actually have more data that we can store if we get more database units for ourselves. So as we go through and need to work with more larger data sets, you might need to scale that up simply for the reason of being able to store more of your data. Now, there are going to be a predefined set of different gigabytes that you're going to have depending on your DTU structure, but you can always go above that allotment as well and you can pay for additional storage that goes beyond what the DTU covers by default. Now let's go over to the vCore purchasing model and let's check out that one. For the general performance of this, you'll notice that you have two options in your compute tier. You have the ability to work with provisioned or serverless compute. Provision means that you have dedicated a set of resources and they are pre-allocated and they are billed per hour. Now, a serverless is not going to have pre-allocated compute, meaning that you're not actually having compute that's available to just you. It's going to be used when necessary, and it's billed as a per second of the cores used. So that's an option right away you have to determine for yourself and how you want to have that control. Now, some of the other things you can do is set up your hardware configuration of that Azure SQL database using the vCore purchasing model. You can also go through and determine your max vCores and your min vCores when you're working with serverless. When you go through and you provision this, you only have the option to choose how many V cores you want by default. So serverless is going to give you this dynamic range between two numbers. V cores with general purpose and provisioned is going to give you one specific number that you can go through and determine to allocate to best fit your specific needs. Well, hopefully we have some better understanding of what the difference between the DTUs or the database transaction units and the V cores or virtual cores are for working inside of Azure SQL databases when determining what would be the best compute tier for you. So if you have more questions, definitely check out my blog around this topic where I talk a little bit more in depth around the topics and the, the generalities of what we can work with when it comes to Azure SQL databases. Or if you want to know more about what it looks like to work with an Azure SQL database in the Azure cloud, check out my class on the on-demand learning library for Pragmatic Works. You can use my code AUSTIN40 to be able to get a 40% off of an annual subscription. And you can go through and you can watch my introduction to Azure SQL Database course, where I go through and talk about this, as well as many other options and availabilities when working with databases in the cloud. Hopefully you've enjoyed this one. I'll see you in the next one.